In mathematical analysis, a space-filling curve is a curve whose range contains the entire two-dimensional unit square or more generally an n-dimensional unit hypercube. Because Giuseppe Pino (1858–1932) was the first to discover one, space-filling curves in the two-dimensional plane are sometimes called Pino curves. But that phrase also refers to the Pino curve, the specific example of a space-filling curve found by Pino. Topic <laughs> definition. Intuitively, a continuous curve in two or three or higher dimensions can be thought of as the path of a continuously moving point. To eliminate the inherent vagueness of this notion, Jordan in 1887 introduced the following rigorous definition, which has since been adopted as the precise description of the notion of a continuous curve. In the most general form, the range of such a function may lie in an arbitrary topological space, but in the most commonly studied cases, the range will lie in a Euclidean space such as the two-dimensional plane, a planar curve, or the three-dimensional space, space curve. Sometimes, the curve is identified with the range or image of the function, the set of all possible values of the function, instead of the function itself. It is also possible to define curves without endpoints to be a continuous function on the real line or on the open unit interval 0, 1. History In 1890, Pino discovered a continuous curve, now called the Pino curve, that passes through every point of the unit square. Pino, 1890. His purpose was to construct a continuous mapping from the unit interval onto the unit square. Pino was motivated by Georg Cantor's earlier counterintuitive result that the infinite number of points in a unit interval is the same cardinality as the infinite number of points in any finite dimensional manifold, such as the unit square. The problem Pino solved was whether such a mapping could be continuous, i.e., a curve that fills a space. Pino's solution does not set up a continuous one-to-one -one correspondence between the unit interval and the unit square, and indeed such a correspondence does not exist see properties below. It was common to associate the vague notions of thinness and one-dimensionality to curves, all normally encountered curves were piecewise differentiable that is, have piecewise continuous derivatives, and such curves cannot fill up the entire unit square. Therefore, Pino's space-filling curve was found to be highly counterintuitive. From Pino's example, it was easy to deduce continuous curves whose ranges contain the n-dimensional hypercube for any positive integer n. It was also easy to extend Pino's example to continuous curves without endpoints, which filled the entire n-dimensional Euclidean space where n is 2, 3, or any other positive integer. Most well-known space-filling curves are constructed iteratively as the limit of a sequence of piecewise linear continuous curves, each one more closely approximating the space-filling limit. Pino's groundbreaking article contained no illustrations of his construction, which is defined in terms of ternary expansions and a mirroring operator. But the graphical construction was perfectly clear to him. He made an ornamental tiling showing a picture of the curve in his home in Turin. Pino's article also ends by observing that the technique can be obviously extended to other odd bases besides base 3. His choice to avoid any appeal to graphical visualization was, no doubt, motivated by a desire for a well-founded, completely rigorous proof owing nothing to pictures. At that time, the beginning of the foundation of general topology, graphical arguments were still included in proofs, yet were becoming a hindrance to understanding often counterintuitive results. 
A year later, David Hilbert published in the same journal a variation of Pino's construction Hilbert 1891. Hilbert's article was the first to include a picture helping to visualize the construction technique, essentially the same as illustrated here. The analytic form of the Hilbert curve, however, is more complicated than Pino's. Topic. Outline of the construction of a space-filling curve Let C display style script style math call C denote the Cantor space 2 n display style script style math bf 2 caret math b n we start with a continuous function h display style script style h from the Cantor space C display style script style math call C onto the entire unit interval 0 1 display style script style 0 1 the restriction of the Cantor function to the Cantor set is an example of such a function from it we get a continuous function h display style script style h from the topological product c times c display style script style math call c times math call c onto the entire unit square 0 1 times 0 1 display style script style 0 1 times 0 1 by setting h x y equals h x h y display style h x y equals h x h y since the Cantor set is homeomorphic to the product c times c display style script style math call c times math call c there is a continuous bijection g display style script style g from the Cantor set onto c times c display style script style math call c times math call c the composition f display style script style f of h display style script style h and g display style script style g is a continuous function mapping the cantor set onto the entire unit square alternatively we could use the theorem that every compact metric space is a continuous image of the cantor set to get the function f display style script style f finally one can extend f display style script style f to a continuous function f display style script style f whose domain is the entire unit interval 0 1 display style script style 0 1 this can be done either by using the teats extension theorem on each of the components of f display style script style f or by simply extending f display style script style f linearly that is on each of the deleted open interval a b display style script style a b in the construction of the cantor set we define the extension part of f 
display style script style f on a b display style script style a b to be the line segment within the unit square joining the values f a display style script style f a and f b display style script style f b topic properties If a curve is not injective, then one can find two intersecting subcurves of the curve, each obtained by considering the images of two disjoint segments from the curve's domain the unit line segment. The two subcurves intersect if the intersection of the two images is non-empty. One might be tempted to think that the meaning of curves intersecting is that they necessarily cross each other, like the intersection point of two non-parallel lines, from one side to the other. However, two curves or two subcurves of one curve may contact one another without crossing, as, for example, a line tangent to a circle does. A non-self-intersecting continuous curve cannot fill the unit square because that will make the curve a homeomorphism from the unit interval onto the unit square any continuous bijection from a compact space onto a Hausdorff space is a homeomorphism. But a unit square has no cut point, and so cannot be homeomorphic to the unit interval, in which all points except the endpoints are cut points. There exist non-self-intersecting curves of non-zero area, the Osgood curves, but they are not space-filling. For the classic Pino and Hilbert space-filling curves, where two subcurves intersect in the technical sense, there is self-contact without self-crossing. A space-filling curve can be everywhere self-crossing if its approximation curves are self-crossing, a space-filling curve's approximations can be self-avoiding, as the figures above illustrate. In three dimensions, self-avoiding approximation curves can even contain knots. Approximation curves remain within a bounded portion of n-dimensional space, but their lengths increase without bound. Space-filling curves are special cases of fractal constructions. No differentiable space-filling curve can exist. Roughly speaking, differentiability puts a bound on how fast the curve can turn. Topic: The hahn mazurkovich theorem. The hahn mazurkovich theorem is the following characterization of spaces that are the continuous image of curves. A non-empty Hausdorff topological space is a continuous image of the unit interval if and only if it is a compact, connected, locally connected second countable space. Spaces that are the continuous image of a unit interval are sometimes called Peano spaces. In many formulations of the hahn mazurkovich theorem, second countable is replaced by matrizable. These two formulations are equivalent. In one direction a compact Hausdorff space is a normal space and, by the Aresen metrization theorem, second countable then implies matrizable. Conversely a compact metric space is second countable. Topic Kleinian groups There are many natural examples of space filling, or rather sphere filling, curves in the theory of doubly degenerate Kleinian groups. For example, Cannon and Thurston 2007 showed that the circle at infinity of the universal cover of a fiber of a mapping torus of a pseudo anisive map is a sphere filling curve. Here, the sphere is the sphere at infinity of hyperbolic 3 space. Topic. Integration Wiener pointed out in the Fourier integral and certain of its applications that space-filling curves could be used to reduce Lebesgue integration in higher dimensions to Lebesgue integration in one dimension. Topic. 
Topic See also Dragon curve Gosper curve Koch curve Moore curve Murray polygon Sierpinski curve Space filling tree Spatial index Hilbert R tree BX tree Z order curve Morton order List of fractals by Hausdorff dimension <laughs>